Hey guys, welcome to Jack's Beautiful You. Today's video, I'm excited because I've been testing out a lot of perfumes lately. I've been testing out some super popular, super hyped up fragrances, and I just wanted to share my thoughts and opinions with you on them. I'm here to let you know whether or not I think they're worth my hard earned money, if I plan to bring them into my collection, or if I'm going to pass on these fragrances. Of course, all the fragrances I'm gonna talk about today, I have thoroughly tested on skin, and I will be spraying them on paper today to refresh my memory, but I've tested all of these fragrances out extensively and I have formed my opinion on them. And this is an interactive video, so I definitely wanna hear from you and I wanna know what you think as well. If you're new here, hi, my name is Jackie. Thank you so much for clicking on my thumbnail today. I truly appreciate you being here. To my returning subscribers, thank you guys so, so much for all your continued support. I appreciate each and every one of you. And without further ado, let's get into this video. All right, let's start out with a fragrance that I completely changed my mind about. I had tried this fragrance a couple months ago and I thought it was nice. This is by Maison Mataha and this is Escapade Gourmand. I really thought this was a nice smelling vanilla, but I didn't think it was worth $200. It seemed really light smelling to me, very light wearing when I tried it the first time. And it just, it was a nice vanilla, but you know, $200 for this vanilla, I just wasn't getting it. I wasn't getting what other people were getting about this fragrance. But I always put my samples aside so that I can try them again or sometimes I'll use up the entire sample and I'll make a mental note to retry that fragrance, especially if it's super popular and a lot of people are loving it because what if I'm missing something, you know? So that's the case with this situation. I decided to order another sample of Escapade Gourmand because so many people had said that they love it. And I did get some feedback that they, they didn't think it was worth the price. Some people, some people weren't getting the hype on it as well, but a lot of people were just saying it's amazing. So I tried it again, and this time I got the hype. This was a completely different experience for me. I got a three mil sample of Escapade Gourmand, and I just went to town. I just sprayed the whole sample. I just went and sprayed myself down from head to toe because I really wanted to experience the fragrance. And at first I was like, yeah, it's just a nice vanilla. But as this perfume starts to dry down, I started to pick up on that magic. There's sugar in here and I was definitely getting this like sugary vibe, but there's also something very creamy in here that reminds me of like creme brulee. So I'm getting a lot of vanilla. I'm getting a lot of this like creamy creme brulee and I was picturing like brown sugar sprinkled on top. And I was getting some decent wear out of the fragrance. It's not a beast, but I was actually getting a better wear than the first time I tried it. It seemed stronger to me than the first time I tried it and I could actually smell it. It was wafting and it was gorgeous, delicious, beautiful, and I get it. I get the hype on Escapade Gourmand now. I've completely changed my mind. So I had put it on my wish list took it off and now it's back on. So Escapade Gourmand is a 100% yes for me. I will be adding that one into my collection. All right, I finally got to try Naxos by Zerzhoff. I've been dying to try this and I actually got this sample from Greta Beth from her online store. So if you haven't checked that out, if you're looking for kind of hard to find samples of perfumes, check out Greta's site. I'll leave the information in the description box. She's got a lot to choose from and she was kind enough to send this to me. So thank you, Greta, because I've been dying to try Naxos. And a lot of people were saying it's a really good honey tobacco fragrance, which it is. It is a gorgeous, gorgeous fragrance. I'm so glad I got to try this one. This is, oh, this is so good. This has some citruses in the opening. I think there's like lemon or bergamot. Lots of honey, tobacco, there's some lavender in here, and there's something in this fragrance that leans a bit masculine for me. I'm kind of on the fence on this one. I had my husband try this, and it smelled absolutely amazing on him. I was like, ooh. <laughs> let's just buy you a bottle, you know what I mean? This smells amazing on you, but he's he's not really into fragrances like I am. He'll wear it if we have it, if it's something that we share, but he's not gonna go out and buy himself a bottle of Naxos. He's not gonna do that. He doesn't want me to buy it for him. The same situation happened with Tony Iommi. I really love that fragrance, but I loved it on him. 
It leans too masculine for me, but he didn't want a bottle because he didn't want to spend the money. I don't know. I have to keep playing with this. As of right now, this is a no for me, not because I don't think it's amazing because I do think it smells incredible, but it's just a bit too masculine for me. It's really good though. This is definitely worth getting your nose on. If you're a woman who likes unisex to masculine leaning scents, or if you're a man, definitely get your nose on this. This is incredible. I can really smell the honey in here. The tobacco is definitely in here, but it doesn't seem smoky to me. I really like that citrusy opening, but I do understand the hype behind this one. I think the hype is real for sure, but I think I'm going to pass because I think it's a bit too masculine for me. I will go ahead and probably revisit this in a couple months and see if I still feel that way. But as of right now, Naxos is a no, but not because I don't think it's good. Hopefully that makes sense. Okay, this next fragrance absolutely shocked me. I did not think I would like this fragrance at all, but I wanted to give it a shot because I love the bottle. So this is by Stefan Humbert Lucas. This is Pink Boa. I love these bottles and I love that color pink. And I just really wasn't expecting to like it because it has basil, it has rosemary and vodka in it. And I'm not really into those herbal kind of rosemary, aromatic, basil scents, typically. Sometimes there's exceptions, but I really don't enjoy like those aromatic types of notes very often. And I was scared to death of the vodka note because vodka, I love a good boozy fragrance, but <laughs> I don't know about vodka, you know? That's going to bring up some high school flashbacks for me right there. <laughs> Because, you know, when I was in high school, we weren't drinking the good vodka. I was afraid I was going to have, like, 1997 flashbacks of high school ODing on vodka. I really don't get a vodka note necessarily. It kind of smells a little boozy, but it's not like a shot of vodka in your face, thank goodness. And I also don't really pick up a whole lot on those aromatic notes either. What I get from this fragrance is a lot of a lot of the raspberry. So there's blackcurrant, bergamot, and raspberry, mostly raspberry, but it is sweet. I was not expecting this perfume to be as sweet as it is. Yeah, I guess I could tell that there's a little bit, there's like a boozy feel in here, but it, it's not like a shot of vodka in your face. It's very sweet. It's like candied raspberries. It's so good. If you like sweet perfumes, this is very feminine, very, very feminine. If you love raspberry, this is so, so good. In the base, you have musk and sandalwood. It is musky, it's airy, but I get this sweet, almost like candied raspberry scent, and I love it, and I was not expecting that. So, yeah, surprisingly, this is a full-on love, and I will definitely be getting a bottle of this at some point, plus the performance is pretty good. Just from this sample, I was getting wafts of it off of me. So I am excited to be adding this one to my collection. I'm really excited because I love the bottle. So Pink Boa is a yes for me. Okay, this next one I really didn't think I would like either. This is also by Stefan Humbert Lucas, and this is God of Fire. This one was super, super hyped, but it was polarizing. Some people loved it, and some people said this wasn't worth it at all. And I was really curious to find out what I thought. Now, I will say when I first got the sample, the first thing I did was spray it on paper. And I was like, nope, that's not for me. I don't like it. I'm not the biggest mango person. I sometimes like mango in my perfumes and sometimes I don't. I can't stand to eat a mango, though. I don't like the way they taste at all. But in perfumes, sometimes I like them. Once I sprayed this on my skin... It was a completely different story. Whatever it was that I didn't like, I don't know, it just doesn't smell very good on paper, but on my skin, it completely changed and it turned into a very sweet, fruity fragrance. So the opening, you have mango, lemon, ginger, and red berries, and I got like that mango and red berries combo on my skin and I loved it. It got very sweet, very tropical, very fruity on my skin. There's some woody notes in here. There's some oud in here as well, but I don't pick up Oud. I would just say I pick up a woodiness. It smells woody in the base. And then there's musk, there's coumarin, there's jasmine, there's amber. It does feel very warm. There is cypriol oil in here, but I'm not getting anything like overly earthy from this fragrance. My nose doesn't pick that up. It doesn't come across on my skin. So again, it's mostly like mango, red berries, sweet, fruity, tropical goodness with some woody notes, a little bit of muskiness. When I just smell it here, I'm like, no, ugh, I don't like it at all. But spraying it on my skin, it completely, 
I don't know, it must just mesh really well with my skin chemistry because it smells fantastic on me, if I do say so myself. So surprisingly, God of Fire is a yes for me and I really didn't think I was gonna like that one, but another one, another one of those gorgeous bottles that I absolutely love that I'm gonna be adding into my collection, so I'm excited. Speaking of gorgeous bottles, let's go ahead and talk about the new Parfums de Marly. This is Altair, is that how you say it? Altair. Hopefully I didn't just completely butcher that. But anyway, I was super curious about this one. This one was getting talked about a ton. I'm a fan of that bottle. I don't know why for the life of me it's in the men's bottle because I don't find this masculine, but I love the color. It's very autumn to me. I just love the color of the bottle. It's very fitting for the season. I'm in the mood for colors like that right now. But anyway, I really enjoy the scent as well. When I first saw the note breakdown of this perfume, I was scared because there's Elemy in this perfume and I am not a big fan of Elemy traditionally. Most of the time when I see Elemy in a fragrance, it's gonna be a no for me. That note just ruins it for me. Elemy comes across as kind of like a citrusy pine needle scent that I just really pick up. I'm very sensitive to the note and I can like pick it up like a bloodhound. <laughs> but in here I don't pick it up, thank goodness. This is cinnamon, bergamot, and cardamom in the opening. I think that cardamom might be why some people are like thinking this is a little bit masculine. I don't really interpret cardamom as masculine, but some people do. And then there's also orange blossom in here. There is bourbon, vanilla, and elemi, but I don't get the elemi. I get lots and lots of the bourbon vanilla. There's musk, there's praline in here, there's guyac wood in here. I think there's some ambroxan as well. Here's what I get the most of. I, I don't get a lot of cinnamon in this fragrance. I do get the cardamom though. I definitely get the orange blossom and I definitely get the vanilla, but to me, the vanilla, I thought there was cacao in here because the vanilla seems a little dusty, like almost like dry. And it's kind of interesting. I wasn't, I was kind of expecting like this creamy vanilla, but I don't get a creamy feel from this fragrance. I get like a, like a dry, a dryness from the fragrance. I'm not really sure exactly where that's coming from, but not in a bad way. Like it smells really, really nice. That praline is in here to really sweeten the fragrance up. It's a little musky. It's got some airiness to it. This is really nice. I really like this a lot. I understand the hype behind this and it smells familiar to me. There's a part of me that wants to say, oh, this isn't the most unique fragrance I've ever smelled. But when I actually try to put my finger on what this smells like, I can't think of anything. So it's like it smells familiar, but it's really not. So yeah, it's really good. I like it a lot. Now, am I gonna run out and pay full price for this? No, I'm, I'm not. Parfums de Marly usually comes down in price eventually. You can usually find them on discounted websites at one point, so I will probably wait for the price to come down. I really don't wanna pay that much money for this fragrance, but I do really like it. I think it's a good, a good release from the house for sure. And I would say, if you're a woman, go ahead and give it a try. Don't be scared because I really don't think it leans masculine. It's unisex in my opinion. So I do like that one. It is a yes, eventually I will be adding it into my collection. Okay, this next one I was so excited for, but also very nervous. This is the new release by Killian. This is Smoking Hot. This has apple and cinnamon in the opening, which you got me there. <laughs> apple and cinnamon, I'm a fan of that. But then there's also smoke, which I'm usually not a fan of. There's tobacco, which I love, and then there's moss, which I'm not a fan of. And then there's bourbon vanilla, and there's some other note, Orkinox. I don't know what that is. Does anybody know what that is? Because I'm not sure. But anyway, I wasn't sure about this fragrance, and I have to say I really like it. I like it a lot more than I thought I would. I definitely get the cinnamon and the apple. This is absolutely a perfect fall fragrance. I mean, this smells like fall. And I almost, almost love this fragrance, but I can't quite get there because of the smoke. So when I first spray it, I get that cinnamon and apple goodness with the tobacco. It's really, really good. And then it has the bourbon vanilla and I love it. I, I'm like, yes, yes, I love all of that. But then the smoke comes in. And I actually thought maybe it would just be, the smoke would be there in the opening. It says the smoke is in the opening. Maybe when you spray it, it's there, but then it dies down. But it actually does the opposite on me. The smoke gets stronger as it dries down and it stays through the entire wear of the fragrance. And I just don't like it. Now it's not, 
it's not like cigarette smoke. It's not like that. You're not going to smell like an ashtray, <laughs> but it's still smoky and I'm not the biggest fan of that. So it was almost there for me, almost there. But I would say if you're someone who likes a sexy, darker, kind of smoky fragrance, if tobacco and cinnamon and apple sounds good to you, it's definitely worth getting your nose on. I think it's a solid, good release from the house. I really like that they stepped outside the box and they did something. This is not another love, don't be shy. <laughs> it's definitely worth checking out. I'm going to pass on it, but I think it's a good release from Killian for sure. So that is by Killian Smoking Hot. All right, this next one, I feel like this one was way overhyped. <laughs> Okay, this is an unpopular opinion. This could fit into an unpopular opinions video. Perfumes everyone else loves that I hate. Okay, that's this next perfume. Everybody lost their mind over this fragrance and I do not get it. This is by YSL Baby Cat. You guys, this smells like black pepper. Like it is so peppery in the opening. There's black pepper. Also, there's Elemi in here as well. And I do pick it up and I don't like it at all. And there's... I think there's suede in here. There's suede or leather in here. I'm not sure which one. Now, I will say that I agree with the people who say that it's not too much. There's definitely a leathery, suede feel to this fragrance, 100%, but I never found it to be like harsh or cold or in your face. So it's a smooth, it's a very smooth fragrance, and I feel like a lot of people are going to love this fragrance, but the black pepper was like overpowering for me. Yeah, and I can't get past that LME either. Like, no. I, like I said, I've tested this on skin. I'm just spraying this to refresh my memory, but wow, I really don't like this at all. Yeah, this is not for me. Baby Cat is not for me, which I'm kind of glad because I think it's pretty expensive, isn't it? I don't know, everybody lost their minds over this one. <laughs> Everybody lost their minds over that one. I just, oh, no. Now, obviously, if you love this fragrance, it's not overhyped, right? Because you love it. It's probably not hyped enough for you. That's how I feel about some fragrances, too. When I hear some people say, oh, that fragrance is overhyped, and it's one of the fragrances that I love, I'm like, oh. <laughs> not really. I'm kidding. I don't get offended over perfumes, but you know, I, I'm thinking to myself, what do you mean? It's not even hyped enough. Like people need to keep talking about it. It's amazing. But if you don't like a fragrance and everybody's raving about it, it's going to be overhyped to you. So that's how Baby Cat is for me. It's way overhyped in my opinion. I don't like it and I have no interest in buying a bottle. Although I will keep this sample because I'd like to go back in a few months and retry it and just see, you know, and just see because like I said, Sometimes I change my mind, like I did with Escapade Gourmand. But anyway, as of right now, Baby Cat is a hard, hard no. All right, I tried the new fragrance from Tom Ford. This is Myrrh Mystery. Hopefully I said that right. But anyway, I'm not the biggest Tom Ford fan, okay? I'm just going to put that out there. I don't typically find that I enjoy most of Tom Ford offerings. I think that Tom Ford as a brand in general, not just his perfume, but makeup and everything, <laughs> is a little bit overpriced and a bit overhyped, in my opinion. I know, Tom Ford fans, you're clutching your pearls right now, I know. I just, I, I just really never got into that brand. I never really got into that house. And I haven't found anything that I just thought, wow, this is so worth $350. But I really have been getting into myrrh lately and I really wanted to try this new fragrance. And I have to say, this is probably my favorite Tom Ford fragrance I think I've ever smelled. This is excellent. This is excellent. That's all I have to say is this is, this is really, really good in my opinion. Yeah, I really like this. Really, really like this. This is a fantastic myrrh fragrance. If you enjoy myrrh, if you enjoy that resinous myrrh note, it is done so well in here. I really feel like this is unisex. I feel like anyone could wear this. This really doesn't lean one way or another to me. It's warm, it's spicy, it's resinous, it's got some woody notes. I think there's sandalwood in here. Yeah, you know, this might be my first Tom Ford bottle. <laughs> this is pretty good. The thing is, is this isn't typically the scent profile I go for. I don't know how often I would wear this fragrance, even though I think this is really fantastic. 
I'm hesitating on whether or not I'm going to get a bottle because I just don't know how often I'd reach for it, but it's really, really good. I don't know. Maybe if I can find it at a discounted price at some point, I will pick it up. I don't know that I want to pay full price for this, but I do think this is really good. I think if you are a fan of woody fragrances, if you like myrrh, this is definitely one to get your nose on for sure. I really enjoy it. So solid release from Tom Ford, in my opinion. All right, I tried two fragrances from Carolina Herrera from the Confidential line. I wanted to dip into these fragrances a little bit more. I tried Mystery Tobacco and really liked it, but found it to be too masculine for me. So I tried two more. And the way that I thought it was gonna go down is the actual opposite of how it actually went. I thought I was going to absolutely love this fragrance and I wasn't sure about the other one, but it was, it was the other way around. So first of all, I thought I was going to absolutely love Sandal Ruby. I thought for sure I would love it because it's warm, spicy, it's woody. It's right up my alley. It's got cinnamon and black pepper in the opening. I love cinnamon. It's got tuberose. I love tuberose. There's sandalwood, there's some cedar, there's some patchouli. All notes that I typically like are in this fragrance. And I have to say, I do like it. I do like this fragrance. I think it's a warm, spicy, woody, very well done fragrance. It smells really good, but when I wore it, for some reason, it never went to a full love. It was just a strong like. And I'm trying very, very hard not to get fragrances in my collection that I just like. Like, all I want are loves at this point. This is really, really good. Amazing performance. This is a beast mode fragrance. <laughs> the sillage is enormous just off of a couple sprays from the sample. Yeah, really like that one. I just don't think I love it. I don't know why. This is a warm, spicy fragrance with cinnamon and I... I typically love those fragrances, but for some reason I just wasn't like in love with it. I'll revisit it again in a couple months and see again if I change my mind, but as of right now, Sandal Ruby's a no. Even though I really like it, it's just not a love. And then I wasn't sure about this one. This is the one that surprised me. This is also by Carolina Herrera, and this is Amethyst Haze. You know, it has notes in here that I like. There's cardamom in here, I believe. There's some lavender. There's coffee. There's vanilla in here as well. And there's some cashmere. I think there's cashmere wood or something cashmere in here. <laughs> and that's actually what I picture when I spray this. When I first got this and I sprayed it, I was like, whoa, this is like the most comforting, cozy, warm, like it, it felt like I was getting a hug from a loved one, you know, like my husband had just walked up to me and hugged me or something. And it is so comforting. That's the feeling that I get from this fragrance. It kind of is a little bit masculine in the opening, but when it starts to dry down on my skin, it it goes completely unisex. That bourbon vanilla really comes through and sweetens the fragrance up. And the vanilla is just very rich. And I really like that lavender and coffee combination. It's very peaceful. <laughs> it's very relaxing. It's very soothing. Oh, I just adore this fragrance. It is unique. I don't have anything else like it in my collection. The performance is not as strong as Sandal Ruby, but it's still good. It's moderate. So I was so shocked by my reaction to this fragrance that I had to have it. So I did order a bottle and I have amethyst haze in my collection. So I do have an upcoming haul video that I need to share with you guys. I have some new fragrances I've added into my collection recently and this is one of them. I just adore this. I just adore it. If you want something that will make you feel like you're wearing a warm cashmere sweater and you want a rich smelling vanilla and you just want something super comforting, like you're getting a hug, <laughs> you definitely need to check this out. I think this would smell amazing on both a man and a woman and I absolutely love it. And if you don't like coffee scents, the coffee in here is really not very strong. The coffee in here is pretty toned down. It's not bold coffee in your face. It's there, I can smell it, but it's, it's just, it's very well blended. It's not super strong. It's not the star of the show. So still get your nose on this one, even if you're not the biggest coffee fan, because I just find it to be very easy. This is a very easy to wear fragrance in my opinion, and I am super surprised at how much I love it. So that is by Carolina Herrera Amethyst 
haze. All right, you guys, that's it for today's video. Those are the fragrances that I've been testing, the ones I want to add into my collection, and the ones I'm going to pass on. Of course, I want to hear from you. Let me know your opinions on these fragrances. Do you like them? Do you love them? Do you hate them? I love to hear from you guys. If you did like this video and you found it helpful, please give it a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel. I hope everybody is having a fantastic day, and hopefully I'll see you in my next video. Bye!